Hi everyone, welcome back to our ongoing series on how to create a life operating system in Notion. Today is going to be a little bit different. Like the last one, we're going to do a few updates on the system, but more significantly, I'm going to introduce the idea and the functionality of database relations and rollups. So I know a lot of you already know how to do that. As soon as I get through the basic introduction of that functionality to people who don't know how to do it, I'm going to then show several updates to the system that use database rollups. So I've added a number of rollups in several different instances, largely in the alignment zone, and I'll show you those new additions. So if the introduction to the rollup and relation functionality is something you're familiar with, just skip ahead this part to the second part and you'll get the new additions to the system. But for those of you who are not familiar with or not comfortable with using either database relations or rollups, rollups of course are dependent on relations, I'm going to introduce that functionality to you. I don't typically introduce functionality on this series, but this one's really important. The system leverages, especially relations, but increasingly rollups. And it's important to understand it. It's not that hard to understand but it is generally considered an advanced feature and something that is intimidating to people. So I think I can explain it in a quick and simple way. I wanna encourage those of you who haven't been connecting with me on Twitter to do so. I'm at August Bradley and happy to answer questions or discuss things there. Here on YouTube, we have the comment section, but those are all tied very specifically to a certain video. On Twitter, the conversation is more open. It's a way for us to discuss ideas more broadly and have a more complete conversation. After this video, which is the second of two system updates, we're finally gonna get into the vault. So we'll go into the media vault and the book vault, and then my personal favorite, the knowledge lab. So lots of cool stuff happening there. I did touch on this in the video I did for the Keep Productive YouTube channel. So if you want a glimpse of what's coming in terms of our vault section, you can take a look at that video I did in the next few weeks. We'll be going into the vault section in much more detail. But before we get to that, let's go through a few updates. Starting from the command center, I'm going to do something a little different and create a new page just so we can start showing the functionality as we build it up from scratch. So we'll call this the demo table. I'm going to, so I created a new page just by hitting plus here. And then I'm going to click table to create a full page table. So this is the database. Table is a database view. And this is just how it starts from scratch. We don't need both of these. I'm going to delete that. And this is going to be our relation. We'll call it a database relation. Now you would name it for the functionality, but I'm for the sake of instruction, I'm going to name it for the tool we're using within Notion. By default, this field is a multi-select. Usually when you create a new field, it's a text field, but you get to pick the field up here. We're going to pick relation because what we want to do is connect this database we just created, this blank one, with another database so that we can take individual records or entries into this demo table. Let me just clarify a little definition first. When I talk about entries or records, those are the horizontal lines in a table view of a database or any entry when you pop it open, that would be an entry or a record. Record is the traditional term used when people talk about databases. So either an entry or a record, it's the exact same thing, those two terms are interchangeable. The columns on the top are called either fields or properties. Same thing. Records and entries are the horizontal rows. Fields and records at the top. If you open one of these up, you'll have all these properties that you can create. They're also known as fields. Those are the items that each entry in the database has the opportunity to have data or information entered for. If you're new to this, each row here is a column here. Now, we want to connect this database. Let's call this sample one, sample two, sample three. So we've got three entries into this database. Now this one, we've titled this database relation because we want this to link to specific entries in another database. So we're going to change this to relation. The term for linking the two databases is relation. You define a property as the relation property. So we do that by choosing relation. Then it asks you to select a database. So here you get to pick the database you want. Let's look at our action items database. We'll connect this through a relation to the action items database. So typically you would label this action items because that's what it is. It's it's the entries from action items databases that are linked here. The link between the two databases is set up. Now you have the option for any entry in here to link to any entry in the action items database. So you click on that and it gives you all these options. Those are just default recommendations. In the case of the action items database, there's so many of them. It's likely that the one you want isn't there. So you can search for it. Let's say we enter 24 because I know the notion video number 24 is, is the one I just recorded moments before I started this one. So I 
know that's right there. So we'll link to that. So that is a video creation task in my action items database. It's got all the properties here that I've entered for this action item task and I connected it. So now sample one is connected to that property in the action items database. The two are linked. Now sample two might want to link to a different one. Maybe that's going to link to my bookkeeping. So I'll click that and link it to the bookkeeping. Now that's linked to bookkeeping. This could link to something else, building the new web platform that I have underway. So we're linking there. So you've seen practical examples of this all through the series. So they're, they're endless. I use databases extensively because it's really fundamentally the most powerful part of Notion. That and the ability to take any entry in a database, open it up and have all the capability of a page down here endlessly. So that's, that's just unprecedented. Okay, so now the interesting thing is most of you probably know how to do the relations. So that's set up here. Rollups are the logical extension to take relational connections even further. So once you make that one connection, you can set it up such that any other data connected to the item automatically comes with it. So this has a priority setting, a due date, a status. This one doesn't have as much as some of them, but it might have a client, it might have notes, uh, might have dependent tasks connected to it, could be connected to projects. It is in fact connected to a content item in the content creation pipeline. So any of the data that exists in the action item database, when you bring a connection to one item in there, it can bring all the data automatically with it. So you wouldn't have to enter that. The way you do that is a roll up. So let's take this one and turn it into a roll up. I'll label it here so we know what it is. So that's a roll up. Now we need to change that from the text default setting to roll up. Right under relation is roll up. Now it is set as a roll up. Roll up has that magnifying glass, but you're not done yet. Now you have to define the roll up. So then you click in any cell under the roll up title and you choose, first of all, the relation. Now the only relation established is with the action items database. So that's the only choice it gave us. If you had five different relations to different databases, you'd have all five to choose from. So you pick the one you want. In this case, it's the only one we have, the action items database that we just set up. Click that. Now you get to choose which other property, what other piece of data in that database you want to come with any relation you set up. So let's say you want the due date, the DO date to come with it. Now it just automatically populates because you've added these already. And so it brings the DO date, the due date that is attached to each of those. Now let's say we want to do another one. Roll down to roll up. Click here to complete the setup for the roll up. Choose our action items database. Now what data do we want to also come with it? Perhaps we want the content item in the content database. So in this case, only one of them, the Notion Video 24, had a connection to a piece of content moving through the content pipeline. So that one rolls up, the rest are blank. And finally, let's do another one. So in each case, you'll want to title it what it actually is. So here you'll say content item. Here you'll say due date. But the way it's working is through a roll up. Let's do one more and then we can add a new record. So here we want to add a roll up. Then we set up the roll up down here. Click action items because that's the relation that we're looking at. From the relation properties, we get to choose which one we want to use. Let's say status because I know they all have status. And active is rolling through automatically. If they were next in line or future, that would be labeled here. So if we add a new one of these, we'll do sample Four. We'll link the relation to the database. And let's say write newsletter here. That automatically brings the due date with it in the status column. Okay, this wasn't labeled, so we'll label that status now that it's set up. There was no content item attached, so that just is left empty. So now this new one has this information. All we did was connect this one item in the action items database and all this other information came with it. And every time we add something new, it'll all come with it. So that's basically how that works. Now let's go into the action zone. So in the last video, I showed you how to connect the content items moving through the content pipeline to action items. And we had a rollup attached to that. So let's look at that as an example of a rollup in action. Now this is the video recording that I have scheduled at the moment right now. And in this case, I have several content items connected as a relation. So this is a task in my action items database. And I've connected this one task to creating four different videos. Each of these is a separate piece of content in the content pipeline that I'm working on in this one sitting of creating content on today's task list. I want to record all four of these videos. Now I've connected them as as relations. Because they're connected as relations, these rollups beneath it are coming with it automatically. So each of these has a next action date. So after I do the recording, this is the date that I intend to do the editing for each of these videos and the status of each of those. So production, next up, next up. Each of these four entries for these two fields is associated with one of these four up here. So that's really helpful. Just by looking in the task, I see all the information I need on the content items associated with that task. And if I need more information, I can just click on the link 
link here and open one of them up. And then I've got the entire record and the whole workspace below and everything associated with that. So extremely powerful, extremely useful. We can look at the same thing on the other side. So at the moment I'm working on this video right here and we open it up and this one is connected to the action item of record notion update videos. This is just one item in this database connected to the one item there. There are four such items in this database connected over there, which is why we saw four in that one. But this one's only connected to one. So we only see one in this. Now the due date, the DO date of that task in the action items database is a roll up here. So we set that up as a roll up action items due date show original. So automatically the due date is coming up. This lets me make sure the next action date entered for this content item in this database is the same as the due date of the task in the action items database. That way I can make sure the two stay aligned. And by connecting the two here, the due date automatically rolls up. Super easy. If I needed to make a change. I could just click over there that easily. I open up the task in the action items database we were just looking at with the four content items attached and all of the next action dates and status for each of those four rolling up automatically. Just wanted to make sure you understood it from both sides, looking at it from each database. So with that, let's look at a few updates I've done to the system using rollups. Back to the action zone, I have taken the goal outcomes and made it a rollup. So how did I do that? Well, you click here, we look at projects. So each action item that is part of a project, the project will be listed here. Now of the tasks I'm doing today, only one of them is associated with the project. I just showed you in the last video how I now have projects here so I can very easily jump into the projects and set up the queue of tasks for each project. That was one addition. The other addition I did is that I made the goal outcome connection a roll up. Now previously when I showed you the task database, this goal outcome was a relation. So it was a direct connection between the action items database, which is the task database, to the goal outcomes database. Well, that was one extra step that had to be done manually. But because we're already connecting the action items database, the task database, to the projects database, and the projects database is already linked to the goal outcomes database, since we're connecting projects here, we can just make this a roll up. So this comes in with projects automatically. And the way we do that is we make this, the goal outcomes field, a roll up. And then we define that roll up as information coming from our relation to the projects database. And the property in the projects database is the goal outcomes. So in the projects database, there's a direct relational link to goal outcomes. And because the task is connected to the project, the project can now automatically roll up the associated goal outcome that's already linked directly through a relation to the projects database. We'll look at that from the projects database view too, if that's a little confusing. So that means you enter the project and automatically goal outcomes is entered. Now, one other change I made here, some people have been asking about this lately. I've actually made the decision to take the pillars relational connection out of the action items database. Pillars are still important and every action item is in service of a pillar. But first of all, this is just too far removed to, to make that useful. And there's so many actions and you're adding action items all the time. And the idea of adding a pillar every time, it's just too cumbersome. I never do it. You shouldn't do it. Let's just remove that connection. And unfortunately, I would have the pillars roll up automatically because the projects and the goal outcomes are connected to pillars. But while roll ups are great when you connect to directly to another database, unfortunately, you cannot do a roll up of a roll up. So in in the goal outcomes database, I'll show you the pillars connection is now a roll up. So when I connect the goal outcomes to the value goals, the pillars ro automatically rolls into the goal outcomes. But because the entry in the goal outcomes database is now a roll up, I can't pull that with it because it would be going through the goal outcomes, through the projects, into the task, and you cannot do a roll up of a roll up. So it, but it's just not necessary. So let's just simplify, remove a field from the action items database, and we don't need pillars here because these tasks that are really directly related to pillars are going to be connected to projects which will be connected to goals, which are connected to pillars. So through the hierarchy that they're established in, you're going to have a connection to pillars. You don't need to directly link it in tasks. It just takes too much time and it's not worth the effort. Now, jumping over to the alignment zone, let's look at projects. Projects have a new roll up of their own. Value goals is now a roll up. And I'm just labeling it here, first of all, so I can show you easily, but also it lets me understand at a glance how these are structured. So DB in my labeling here means it's a direct relation to a database. Roll up, of course, means it's a roll up, which means it's coming through another direct relation as a roll up connected to that. So in the projects database, the connection to goal outcomes is a relation. As we showed earlier, relation is a direct connection to another database. So this record here, the new website and rebranding is connected to the 
new YZ Tech implementation, which is a goal outcome. That's a relation to another database. And that's just set up by clicking and choosing the record in that other database that's relevant to this record. Now, once that's established, all the goal outcomes have value goals attached to them. So we don't need to enter it and select a value goal again here. We're just having that automatically come with that. And the way you do that is you make it a roll up and you choose goal outcomes because it's coming from this goal outcomes relation and then value goals. And then value goals is the property within the goal outcomes database that you want to come along every time you do a direct link to a goal outcome. Similarly, if we close projects and open goal outcomes. We now have a roll up for pillars. So goal outcomes, as we talked about in our other video, we have a whole video on goals that explains the relationship between goal outcomes and value goals. If you're interested in that, go check that video out. But if you're familiar with it, this shows you how they're connected. So goal outcomes are connected to value goals through a relation. So the relation in the value goals is goal outcomes linking to one of these and the relation in the goal outcomes to the value goals is here linking to one of these so that's sort of a crisscross relational link between the two this in this view you can see the connection from both sides now pillars every value goal has a pillar assigned now this is a direct relation set up as a relation so every value goal are already has a pillar so when we connect the goal outcomes to a value goal the pillars will come automatically with it as a roll-up this also ensures not only saves the step of having to add each each goal outcome to each pillar. It also means it's correct. It's always maintained exactly the same as the database it's rolling up to. So these two will always be, the pillars assigned to each value goal here will always be 100% consistent with what's assigned to the goal outcomes because it's coming through automatically with the relation to the value goal. The way this is set up is the relation is value goals, which is this direct relation to this database here, and pillars is the field, the column within here that you want to come along every time you have a value goal linked to a record here. So that's the most basic use of rollups, just bringing in another data field, just to bring that one item along with it. But there are two more powerful uses. One is to have many relational links and bring many items with it. And in that instance, when the item you're bringing in is a number, you can apply mathematical formulas to it. So you can average it, you can do a total sum, and that gives you even more power. So let me show you how that can be used. All right, so let's jump into the cycle reviews. We did a whole video on these, both the weekly reviews and a separate video on the monthly and quarterly reviews. So if you're interested in going deeper into this, I recommend you check out those past videos. But for the sake of showing this roll-up functionality, let's open the month of April. And this is the monthly review I did for the month of April. And you see a lot of these database fields are completely filled out. As I explained in that video, because of roll-ups and relations, when I open this at the end of the month to do my review, 90% of this is automatically filled in. I don't have to do anything. Thing. All I have to fill in is the theme, the gratitude, and the win for the month, and the learning. Everything else is automatically populated. And the reason for that is as I do each weekly review, I'll attach that week to the month that it happens in. So in this case, these five weeks had all or some other days in April, so I attached them to April. Now when I open April at the end of the month, these are already attached. So this is already filled out. And at the same time, when I do accomplishments, I attach them to a month, or disappointments, I attach them to a month. So these are already populated automatically when I open this at the end of the month, and the disappointments are all populated. Moreover, because the weeks are populated, all the rollups associated with the weeks are completely filled out as well. So all these magnifying glasses items down here are roll-ups. And so because these weeks are attached, all these items, which were entries in those weeks, roll up together. So it's all of them aggregated because all these weeks are attached. It's the full list across all those weeks. So at the end of each week, I do a summary of the improvements I want to implement in my life from what I've learned and, and from the successes and failures I had that week. I'll note down my improvements and those improvements will roll up to the month view all together in aggregate. So it makes it very easy for me to do a summary here. I do a line right here where I just enter my learnings from the month. And that's super easy because I have all my learnings from each week and I can see what are reoccurring themes and what are the most important things that I want to actually bring into my monthly summary. And the reason I'm doing a monthly summary here is I want these monthly summaries to roll up to the year. So at the end of the year, all of these monthly learnings will roll up. Unfortunately, you can't do a roll up of a roll up, as I said earlier. So these roll ups from the week cannot then further roll up to the year. The field here is a roll up and a roll up field cannot roll up to an additional database. So, but that's okay because this is a lot. If you took all of these from every week and added them together, it would just be a jumbled mess. So this means I look at this number, which is easy to digest, and I'll do a summary from that, which is good because I need to write down and think 
and process, you know, what is my learning for the month based on all these entries from the weeks. And therefore I have a short, succinct summary for the month. And then when I look at the 12 of these all rolled up in the same way that these weeks are rolled up here to the month, all of these months, just like this one, will be rolled up to the year. And I'll be able to have a very clear vision of what learnings I had monthly uh, in the same way, these weekly effectiveness ratings all roll up. So we have five here and we have five here. And it just gives me a sense of how effective the month was by looking at how effective I rated each week. Makes it very clear how successful that month was. The same point, weekly focus priorities. Each week I assign a focus priority and those all roll up so I get a sense for the month what the overall priority was. And for gratefulness, I enter what I'm grateful for each week and automatically it rolls up all together for the month. And that means when I enter my monthly summary of the gratefulness up here, all I have to do is skim all the weekly aggregates and it's very easy for me to see what I was grateful for over the month. All of this is rolling up automatically because we have the one relational link. That one relational link lets you roll up all of the aggregates across all of those connected entries in that other database. Now, one final example that can show how math can be applied to the rollups. So this is a week. I'm looking at the weekly review for May 11th through 17th, just as an example. Now, in this case down here, we have the daily tracking database relational link. So this is a relational link to another database. This other database is the data tracking that I do day by day. So every day I enter several pieces of data for that day. And some of it's just some of it's sleep tracking information, some of it's weight tracking, some of it's health and fitness, some of it's business metrics. So that is connected as I enter each day, I'll connect it to that current week. So when I look at that week at the end of the week to do the review, all of these days are already attached to the week. Because the days are attached, all the data that I find useful at the weekly level rolls up with it automatically. So again, all these magnifying glasses are rollups that are coming along with all these date tags that are associated to the daily tracking database. Now this one is my workouts. The number here is the percent of days that I did a workout over the week. So of the seven days in the week, you click on this, it's set to my daily tracking database. Connected to the data, the data field is whether the workout checkbox was checked or not. And then the calculation is the percent of days that are connected between these two databases, which is the seven days for the week, the percent of those days that I checked off the workout. So you could just show original, in which case it'll show you the checkboxes for the seven days, which days are checked and which days are not checked. If you change that to count all, it'll count the number of days that are linked, but that's not particularly helpful here. Checked will tell you the number of days that were checked. So that's one piece of information that could be useful. You know, five of the seven days were checked. Unchecked will tell you how many weren't checked. So that tells you the two days that I did not work out. But what I find most useful is the percent checked. That's what we had. So the percent of days checked was 71.4, which is because five of the seven days had a checkbox and it gives you that percentage. That's the most useful number for this kind of thing. So that's what I did here. So for sleep time, these are the number of hours that I slept those nights. Some people ask me how I'm calculating that. I'm just using the information from my aura ring, which measures my sleep. But if you don't have a sleep tracker, all you have to do is subtract the time you woke up from the time you went to bed. Now, in this case, I have both the average sleep time, which here came out to 7.5 hours a night, which is an average of these seven entries. But I also find it useful to see the range to see if there are any outliers. So here we can see the options for the mathematical formulas. And we have more options here because the previous one was a checkbox, but this one's a number. A number is gonna give you a lot more options. And what I'm doing here is on this one, get, getting the average. So it's gonna tell me the average sleep time of every night's sleep over the week. This one's gonna show me each individual Day. Show original will show you all of the data entries for the whole week. So that's the seven nights of sleep in the length of time I slept each night. And that's helpful because it shows me the range, but you could also do the sum if you wanted to total them. You do the medium, the min, the max, the range. Actually range would be useful. It's helpful to have a consistent night's sleep, so that might be useful. But really seeing the original data numbers gives me a more clear view on how many outliers there were and how consistent my sleep was. So I find both of those are useful just by setting it to average here. And we've got the show original to see the range and the trend, see how it's changing over the week. And then for output, so at the end of each day, I'll enter as part of my wind down for the day, the percent of work that I completed relative to the work I had intended to complete. So that's a measurement of how successful I was on any given day, it shows me the range. So again, so I can see any outliers. And then it also gives me the average. So I can see overall for the week, how good was I at implementing and accomplishing what I had set out to do each day.
And all that comes in automatically with no effort from me, just because when I create each day, I link it to the week. So when I open the week, I've got all those direct relations and then I've got all these rollups coming along with those direct relation entries. Similarly up here, I have improvements at the end of each day. This is also coming with the daily tracking database. At the end of each day, I enter any improvements that I think I would have made that day more successful so I can learn going forward. This is coming up as a rollup automatically along with that daily tracking relation that I showed you down here. I just have it placed a little bit higher because up here I'm doing my summary for the week on improvements. So seeing the rollup of all the improvements I listed for each individual day helps me give a week-long overall improvement assessment that I can then enter here. Again, since you cannot do a roll-up of a roll-up, I do a summary here so that this will roll up to the months. We're in the weeks right now, this will roll up to the months. Unfortunately, I can't roll up all these daily entries to the month because these are coming in as a roll-up and you can't do a roll-up of a roll-up. But it's helpful though because I can very easily do a summary for the week. And frankly, it's valuable to sit down, dissect the weekly improvement notes and give one interpretation of the whole week. It forces me to think about it and write down a particular takeaway. And then when I roll this up to the month, it won't be the long clutter of many of them. It's just a summary. So I'll get, when I look at the month, I'll get four or five of these rather than 30 of them, which would be a little bit overwhelming. So actually that in the end works out better, though I do hope someday we'll be able to do roll-ups of roll-ups because there are times that would be useful. And then one last thing that I meant to show you earlier, but I just realized I didn't. We now have in the projects database an actions remaining column. This was a suggestion that came from a viewer who showed me a really cool idea and I love it. It's so helpful. His name was Anton Milenichev, so I really appreciate him sending me the suggestion. And now I just wanted to share it with all of you guys because it's now part of the system that I'm using. So the actions remaining column will measure for each project how many actions are queued up to execute that project. So this is a rollup that's set up as a rollup here. And the way this one works is the action items. So this is in projects, there's a relation to the action items, which is the task database. So for each action assigned to a task, this is gonna give us a count for each action item it's gonna look at the property called done, which is a checkbox that tells us whether the, the action item is done or not. And we're gonna calculate, which is total, the checkboxes that are unchecked. So that means all of the items assigned to that particular project that are not completed. Previously, we had the direct link to the action, which still exists in the database. If you open up the project's entry, you'll still see the relational link to all the tasks. You know, as we've gone through before, we did a whole video on projects. Up here, we have a link to all the action items, but that's not very useful. Much more useful is to come down here and line them up properly with sorting by status level and then due date. So down here, we have the action items lined up. In this case, there are only two of them. But what happened was once you checked them as done, they would still remain linked. Now down here, we could filter them out so you wouldn't see them anymore. And that was fine down here. And this is really where we work with the actions. But if in the table view, or in this field view up here, anything that's checked done would remain connected. So it would get really cluttered with a mix of completed and uncompleted action items, which is not helpful at all. Now, we remove that field from this view because it's just not necessary and it's just too much clutter anyway. But we have an action items remaining column that will tell us all of the action items or tasks associated with this particular project that have not checked the done box, which means they're not completed. So we know for each project at a glance in this view how many tasks are remaining uncompleted extremely valuable. So in the same way we're doing that in projects, I'm also now doing that in goal outcomes. So we have in projects, we're measuring the tasks that need to be done for each project. In goal outcomes, we're measuring projects that need to be done for each goal outcome. So for each goal outcome that's underway, we have project counts. This is the number of projects set up to advance each of these goal outcomes. Now remember, some of goal, the goal outcomes are advanced by habits and routines. So not every goal outcome needs a project, but most goal outcomes are advanced by projects. And this tells you at a glance how many are set up. This is active projects too. So in order to do this, we had to add a checkbox. So instead of having a completed status, which I still have here, but it's no longer used and I'll, I'll remove it soon. I just wanted to leave it here to show you what we used to have. Instead, we have an active checkbox because this rollup function works on a checkbox. It can't work as easily for a status setting in a single select. So you check the active ones, the ones that are active, this shouldn't be active. So those are active and that's how we indicate what's actually in progress for these goal outcomes. And you wanna make sure every goal out outcome has either an active project or more underway to advance it or habits and routines that are underway. So any of the zeros when you're doing your 
quarterly or monthly reviews, you'll wanna to check to make sure they have habits and routines in place. And in this case, I do. And so that just lets us know that all of our goal outcomes are being advanced and how many projects are lined up and active to make that happen. And that is how we make things happen and get things done. So that's how you do database relations and that's how you do rollups. And as you see, there's a lot of power in bringing these automated rollups in. We're bringing more and more of them into the system. It just makes it easier and faster because you don't have to maintain as many things manually. It also enhances accuracy because when you're maintaining two different database relations to the same thing manually, well, you're not always gonna keep them all up to date at the same level. But if it's coming through automatically as a rollup, then both databases will have the same data no matter what. So it increases accuracy as well as being faster and more efficient. So with that out of the way, we're next gonna get into our vaults, the media vault, then we'll get into the book vault, and then my personal favorite, the knowledge lab, which sort of ties several of the vaults together. If you have any ideas you wanna discuss or explore, hit me up on Twitter. I think Twitter is a good way to expand the conversation. So if exploring this further is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave thoughts or questions below and hit like if you found this valuable. I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work super hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.